Hey everybody, this is John from Code Planet, back with another video. Uh, today's video is going to be integrating HappyJS, uh, the Node server which we covered earlier, with Socket.io, uh, which is a really cool Node abstraction on WebSockets. So a little bit of history first. Um, we check out HappyJS.com, which we've seen before. It's a great uh, you know Node framework. I have a few videos on it, so if you're not familiar with it, you might want to check out those first. Uh, and then the second piece of technology that we're going to be looking at is Socket.io, which is really cool. So basically, uh, web sockets are an underlying technology that allow you to push data instead of pulling. So if you think about web applications that you've built using Ajax, the idea is that you're kind of constantly hitting the server being like, hey, do you have anything new for me? They're like, you know, hey, I'm over here. Do you have anything new for me? Um, which is really cool, but it, as you can imagine, it's pretty inefficient. Uh, so the idea here is that when the server does have something new, it can actually push that data out to all the clients, as opposed to the clients having to pull constantly. So Socket.io is a node library on top of that, and what's really cool about it is it has a bunch of great browser support. So if your browser doesn't support WebSockets, uh, it'll kind of resort automatically to like an Ajax post or long polling or something like that. So it's pretty cool. And the more I was thinking about it, I think that there's kind of a lot going on here, so I'm going to split this up into two videos. Uh, right now, we're just going to cover getting everything up and going, uh, so we'll get kind of like a Hello World example, and then the next video, we'll actually build something kind of cool, uh, or maybe like we'll have a button that increments a count on all the clients or something like that. Uh, so yeah, the very first thing we're going to do, I'm going to go over here into my terminal, and I'm just going to make a new folder. I'm going to call it something like happy-socket, something like that. And then we're going to go in there. So we've got this blank folder. And as we do in a lot of the videos, I'm going to go ahead and do an npm init. Obviously, if you are building this for a production app, you're going to want to fill all these things in. But for now, I'm just going to hit enter on a bunch of them, uh, except this one, which I'll call server.js. And I'll hit enter a bunch. Okay. So we have our npm init done. And now we're going to look at the libraries that we're going to need. Uh, so first off, we're just going to need to install and save uh, happy and socket.io. Those are the two that we're going to be working with. Uh, there's one more that we're going to run into in a little bit, but for now this should get us kind of where we need to be. Um, all right, so as those build, I think the basic thing that we should do is like very first we should build a happy app that just says hello world, then we'll add the socket.io support on the back end, and then we'll add it on the front end as well. Um, I got to do some <laughs> Xcode iOS license agreement. I think we should be fine for now though. All right, so we've got nothing here except for that package JSON that npm init made, and then a node modules folder. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a new file called server.js. And basically what we want to do here is just make a very basic happy app, kind of like we've done in the past. So I'm going to do something like bar happy equals and then require the happy package. Uh, and then we'll do, you know, like bar server equals a new happy dot. I think it's actually caps new happy dot server. Uh, and we'll do something like, you know, the server should make a connection. Uh, just for now, we'll just specify that I'll do it on port 3000. Uh, okay, so that should be pretty cool. Uh, then maybe we'll just add like one very basic route. Uh, again, like I cover all of this kind of setup stuff in the other videos on YouTube's Code Planet account. So if you're not familiar with that, go check those out first. Um, but I'll do a method of type get. And then we'll do the path of just the default path. Uh, and then we'll have our handler for it, uh, and that has like a, the request that's coming in oops, and the reply that it gives back, uh, and then we'll just like reply, I think we can just do something like uh, hello world, something like that for now. Uh, okay, cool, so we'll finish off, let's see, finish off that, finish off that handler there. Um, cool, and then we should be able to just do our server.start, and that also takes a callback function, which is optional. Uh, so we could just say something like console log, you know, uh, server is running at, and then they get some pretty cool things that you can use. I think it's something like server.info, and then I think you get like URI. Uh, we could just put 3000 because we know where it's running, but I think that's a cool tool we can use. Uh, so let's go see if this works first. So I'm just going to run node on server.js. All right, cool. It says server is running, and I go ahead and click that, and here we go. We got our hello world. So that's like the very, very basic um, hello world with happy.js. We haven't used socket.io at all. So the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go into our server and instead of serving some raw text like we can see right now, 
that uh, on line 10, we're just serving the text hello world. Uh, we're gonna actually wanna be able to serve uh, an HTML file. And so what this is gonna require, because Happy doesn't come with this out of the box, is a Happy extension, uh, and it's called Inert, which lets you serve static content like pictures or HTML. So we'll do an npm install that dash dash save Inert, and that'll add that to our project folder as well. All right, so now that that's done, um, we've got a little bit of reconfiguring that we need to do. So this is like the way that Happy um, allows you to register extensions. Um, so we'll go down here and we'll do something like server.register. And then we want to like in here require the inert uh, library. And then we get this again, kind of like optional, but good to do callback uh, with an error in it. And then so you can do something like, you know, okay, well, if there was an error, don't try to run the app. You know, just throw the error. Uh, I don't know what's going on with my uh, spacing here, but it's not working. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take kind of all the rest of that stuff and we're just gonna move it in here. So that like, just basically saying that everything that gets done, uh, gets done with that inert plugin required. So now instead of just doing this reply, we can do something like reply dot, whoa, reply dot file. And then instead of hello world, we can do something like index.html. So now if we go ahead and start that, we should get an error because we don't have an index.html. Oh, we get a different error because I added something that I shouldn't have. Let's see, line 27. Um, got that, that closes. If error, the route closes, server start closes. Where is it? It's looking good to me. What am I missing here? Oh, I think it's just that I'm not closing out this. Uh... Yeah, there it is. Okay, cool. So I'm just not closing out that server register up at the top. Uh, but anyway, so if I run on server, um, it says it's running here. Uh, but we get a 404 not found because we don't have an index.html, which makes perfect sense. So we go back here and we just make an actually vim index.html. That's good. Uh, then I can put like hello from HTML in here, node server again, come back over here, and here we go, hello from HTML. Okay, so that was step two. So we, first step was get a happy server running, second step was get it to serve some static content. Um, so now the last step is to integrate Socket.io. Um, and a lot of this stuff can be found if you just go to like the Socket.io or the happy.js uh, docs, they're really great for both products. Um, so you can follow along with this, but if you want to do anything different, uh, I'd really recommend checking those out. You'll see a lot of similarities in the code. Um, so I guess kind of the first thing we want to do is that on Socket.io's documentation, they have like this basic script um, that they use on the front end. Um, and I guess we'll walk through it a little bit. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go into index.html. Uh, and I'm just going to paste what they have on their uh, homepage. So this is a very, very simple HTML document, and then it's going to link to this script source, and this is going to be hitting, pulling off the server where we, uh, where we did an npm install socket, and then there's like this other inline JavaScript, which is going to like connect to our server here, uh, localhost 3000, and then it's like on, and these are just like random event names. And we'll start to see the similarities, but it's like when a news event is triggered, we should console log the data, and then we should emit our own, again, like arbitrary event, something with its own data. So I'm just gonna copy paste that in there for now. I hope it'll make a lot more sense as we go forward, but I'm just gonna leave that in there. Then I'm gonna go back to server. Uh, and on this side, hopefully it's like a little bit more clear what's going on. So before we do that register, we're going to add one more thing, which is var io, and that's going to be where we require uh, socket.io, and then socket.io returns a function, and what you pass into that function is your server's listener. So you can kind of just, it might be easier just to take this one at my word for now, but hopefully it'll start making some more sense. Um, basically, like, when we do this var server equals new happy server, um, it returns an object. And one of the things, one of the things on the object we can see down here, uh, server.info, which itself is an object, but another one of the things that gets returned is this listener. Uh, so this is just built into happy, this is something you get. So really this line can just be copy pasted. Like this is how to take a happy server and bind it to a socket.io server. I uh, hope that makes sense. 
Um, so that's just one line there. And then, and this could also be done in a different file, but for simplicity's sake, I'll leave it in here. The last thing that we're gonna wanna do is kind of, let me just open these in two tabs next to each other. I'm gonna open index. So we have this kind of like, on one event, do something on, and then throw a different event. Um, we're gonna do the exact same logic over here on the server. Um, so we'll do something like uh, IO, which is what we're getting from line six. That's like the socket IO client. And then it on any new connection. This is kind of a magic word that you get whenever somebody connects. Uh, and it returns this like socket connection. Uh, cool. So on a new connection, what we want to do is we want to socket.emit this news method, this news event, and then we'll pass it like, I don't know, their example I think on their website is like, hello, and then world. Um, so I'm hoping you can see like, so anytime a client connects to the server is what this is saying, we emit an event named news and we pass along with it just this random JavaScript object, which could have anything in it, but it has a key of hello value world. So then on here, it's like when the news event gets triggered, which is what we're doing here, um, we take that data, we console log it, and then we throw our own event called something. So the last thing we need is an event listener for something. So console on something, we take a function. So this code is like, this is where you see some kind of cool patterns where like the code you write on the client and the code you write on the server should be basically identical. Um, and we'll console log it. Now this console log will come out in our terminal log, not in the web. Um, okay, so that's like the basic setup. There's a lot more st stuff you can do, but let's take a quick break and see, make sure I, I wrote everything right and that it's gonna be running. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and save out of both of those. And I'm gonna node server. Okay, we got an error. Uh, oh, I did a semicolon instead of a colon. I just got a new keyboard. So sorry if it's a little bit clacky. And also I made a few typos, but it's a sweet keyboard. Uh, another one here, unexpected token on 33. Uh, what did I do? Let's see, socket on something that looks, oh, I see, I closed out this here. So it's like, it's uh, two parameters. One is the event and then the other is the callback. Uh, one more time here. Okay, there we go. So we got this thing running again. So now if we go and look at it, we've got uh, nothing on the screen, but we do have this object that we're console logging, right? With a key of hello and the value of world. And then if we look back on our server, once that connection was made, we get my and data. So then like, just to kind of prove it's working, and I'm gonna end the video here soon because I know we've covered a ton of stuff. Um, and I do wanna do one where things are cooler, but if we split it and I refresh the uh, screen, every time I hit this thing, um, a my data will fire. And similarly, every time I hit this thing, uh, it'll send it down the hello world. Um, and so this is like kind of cool where, you know, no matter what browser you are, like a bunch of different clients could be hitting it and you'll see a new my data firing each time. Uh, so in the next video, we'll cover some of the more like fun feature work you can do. I hope this was a good introduction to get you set up. If you have any questions on stuff I covered, please let me know in the comments uh, and I'll make a video to address those. Thanks.